What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, as promised, I'm finally doing my book review on David and Goliath. This is my wife, Natalie. She's read the book too, so we're gonna do a combined book review today in a segment that I like to call On the Same Page, coming up. Welcome back. So I'm here today with my wife, Natalie. We're talking about David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell. This book came back out in 2013. Malcolm Gladwell's written a bunch of books since then. Pretty, pretty decent. No. <laughs> <laughs> the book is actually a string of different stories. The main concept of the book is talking about underdogs and how they tend to beat like the giants. So David and Goliath is obviously a story about uh, a kid beating a giant. It's a biblical story. Um, so this book is all about underdog stories and why we shouldn't be so surprised that an underdog can beat the giant. It's got a bunch of different stories that are in three different parts of the book. Part one is titled Advantages of Disadvantages. So it talks about why being the underdog can actually be a strength and a good thing in a battle. Part two is talking about the theory of desirable difficulty and that kind of touches on how difficulties in our life can actually shape us to be very strong in certain areas. And the last part is about limits of power which talks a little bit more about governments and that kind of thing and the role they play in creating Davids or underdogs. So first I'm actually interested to, to Natalie to see what you thought of this book. So go ahead, give your review, let me know what you thought. Okay, so here's what I thought. So the book is broken down into a bunch of real life stories uh, just to kind of help deliver the messages, I guess, that Malcolm's trying to get across. The thing that I didn't really like about it were that the stories were not very engaging. Most of the ideas were simple and not deep enough for me, I guess. So for example, there is a point in the book where Malcolm says that people often have the assumption that wealth puts you ahead but in fact, it doesn't. This isn't really a novel idea to me. This is something I already assumed and I've heard elsewhere. So anyways, that's kind of an example. Um, but the moral of the story to me is that this book wasn't very groundbreaking. Um, it didn't challenge me in any way or kind of push me to think outside the box. It was pretty basic, kind of boring. I actually skipped like maybe the last 20 pages of the book just because I, I was pretty disengaged. But that's just my opinion. And it kind of turned me off from reading any other Malcolm Gladwell books. So, yeah, I'm just going to take a break from them for a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to be reading Blink no. together. Okay. No. So, okay, I have I had kind of a like a balanced comment on it. So you talked you talked about the stories. Like, yeah, so it is very much a lot of storytelling to get the points across. Um, I'd say based on, like, compared to some of the other books that are in this, uh, genre, I was surprised that it's like a lot of storytelling, more storytelling than I would say science behind it. It's it's very uh, theoretical, so um, that was kind of uh, different for me. But I really liked some of the stories because some of them were historical stories about the unrest in Northern Ireland and uh, war in Vietnam and that kind of thing. So I got to learn about those events through this book. It kind of uh, was kind of cool. Um, so I did like the whole concept, I think, of like, here is why underdogs uh, can be successful. I, I thought it was interesting to kind of explain that phenomenon in a book, but I don't think it would have taken 275 pages. I think the reason that the book is as long as it is is because it's got nine or 10 stories about it. So one thing that is really interesting is I, I read the book front to back and I still can't figure out why this book is in the business and leadership section of the bookstore. But it's interesting because it's like presenting a theory, but it doesn't actually have like a lot of instructions on here's how you apply this to leadership, I guess. Like if it's a book you just want to read about a certain concept, it's really interesting, but um, I don't think it's got the, the sort of instructional piece that maybe people are expecting when they take a book out of that section. So, um, but I overall kind of liked it. So I guess, are we on the same page for this no. book? No, I don't, th I don't think we are. So it's like lying to yourself. First on the same page, we're not on the same page. It says it's a number one national bestseller, but I don't know. I think, I, I feel like know. most books are. I wouldn't trust that. 
Well, there you go. So that's our review on David and Goliath. I thought it wasn't too bad. Natalie, maybe a little bit more picky. Okay, and with that, I think that rounds off 30 videos for the year. Um, so the next video, we're gonna talk a little bit about 2019 and how we did with our goals in 2019, our financial goals. And then we're gonna set up our goals for 2020. And we'll talk a little bit about goals for our finances, maybe goals for the YouTube channel and uh, plans we have for the YouTube channel. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching, spread the wealth, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. What is... <laughs> what happened? The book has come out, I think, a couple of years ago. I don't actually know. Back and I still can't figure out why this book is in the business and leadership section of the bookstore. And why it's so popular.